welcome everyone uh welcome to today's webinar i am your host hari krishnan uh i am with the marketing team of zoho survey uh i make a marketing content like blogs articles and landing pages for zoho survey and then i take webinars for different topics and uh i have with me vignesh who is a customer success expert uh having through having uh interacted with customers for many years he is well acquainted with the uh requirements of the survey industry so the topic for today's webinar is uh, how to analyze survey reports yeah so perhaps the most important part of uh conducting a survey uh how you analyze the reports and what you do with the data basically uh, paves the way for the next steps all right so this is um, today's agenda first i'll show you how to get started what are some of the things uh, you need to do in the initial stages while you are making the survey so that later on when you analyze reports it becomes easier and more organized uh next we'll take a look at data visualization that is the different types of bar graphs that are used to represent different types of data and metrics then comes a uh, report classification which is uh, the type of reports you have in zoho survey and how you can use them to your advantage then i'll give you some tips some best practices while uh, analyzing survey data that will give you an edge and then uh, we'll take a look inside the product so that you can familiarize yourself with the concepts you see here we'll then have a q and a session where all your questions will be answered so stay till the end okay so how to get started so the first step i'd like to give you is use a combination of both quantitative and qualitative questions so quantitative uh, data refers to data that can be measured like your customer effort score your customer satisfaction score and the net promoter score and qualitative data will tell you why you got that score so it will give you deeper insights on why customers uh, say what they say and uh, why they do what they do uh, so don't use too many of them but a couple of them should do the trick the second one is using multiple collectors so in zoho survey you can make different collectors that is you can create different urls for the same survey and this is helpful in instances where you have to send the same survey to uh to different locations the location a location b or through different social media channels like instagram twitter or maybe different departments within the same organization so this will make it extremely convenient while you are analyzing the reports so if you want to take a look at uh, data from location a alone this will help you out and uh, the next step would be include matrix type questions yeah so matrix type questions helps respondent uh, the respondents to rate different aspects within the same question so this not only makes it easier for the respondent but also for you the researcher the report is uh, short crisp and it's cleaner uh, the same goes for sorry same goes for uh, survey logics well, when you use different types of logics like page skip logic and display logics you your respondents uh get relevant questions and that makes sure that the data you get is uh cleaner and more organized so uh, to help me explain certain concepts better i'll use the example of uh, the eos which is basically a chain of hotels it's a fictional hotel and uh, they want to get feedback from its customers and they want to see if 
the check-in check-out process is going well and uh, basically trying to understand what they can do better okay so we'll first take a look at uh, the customer efforts code so let's say the eos wants to see uh, how easy or how difficult it is for their customers to check in so this type of data can be represented using a simple bar graph so i can take look at this data and say that about 36.36% uh, of the people have given them a score of nine. So this is uh, simple stuff. Now things uh, get a little more interesting when uh, there's two dimensional data. <clears throat> so for example, let's say the EOS wants its respondents to rate the concierge assigned on different aspects like promptness, friendliness, ability to resolve issues. In this case, uh, the data is best represented using a stacked bar graph. So I can use this report uh, and I can see that, let's say, when it comes to ability to resolve issues, 38.89 uh, of uh, percentage of people have, uh, say, the concierge was excellent. 44.44% I think the person was above average and 16.67 think they, uh, the person was average. So this is called a stacked bar graph. Uh, now this data can also be represented using uh, something called a spider chart. So again, if I want to look at the ability to resolve issues, I can see that it's 38.89, uh, excellent. And 44.4% uh, think the person was uh, above average and 16.67 average. So uh, it's just another way of re uh, representing the same data. It's, it just uh, boils down to individual preferences. Now let's get uh, a bit more advanced. So let's say the EOS asks its respondents to rate different people, say different stuff on different aspects, like promptness, friendliness, ability to resolve issues. Uh, in this case, this data is best represented using a clustered bar graph. So I take one look at this data and I can tell that when it comes to ability to understand and resolve issues. Uh, the reception staff has got a rating of five from 22.2% of the people and a rating of four from 33.3% of the people and so on for the staff at the restaurant, the housekeeping staff. And I can do this for different aspects like friendliness or promptness. Uh, the net promoter score, uh, the simple yet uh, effective uh, reporting uh, score that one should certainly have in their survey. Uh, this is uh, usually used with a question like, uh, how likely are you to promote a certain service to others? And uh, a score of zero to six is known as a detractor. Uh, uh, seven to eight is passive, uh, nine to eight, ten uh, is known as a promoter. So we'll head over to uh, qualitative data now. So before you start analyzing open-ended questions individually, it's helpful to have a general understanding of the, the collective opinion, or like a summary, if you will. So, and the tools that will help you do this are sentiment analysis and word cloud. So sentiment analysis takes uh, words that were used by your respondents 
and then the AI does its magic. And then you get a report on what percentage of people are happy with your service or are disappointed with the service or angry with the service and, and so on. A word cloud, like the name suggests, uh, it takes words that were frequently used by the respondents and uh, it puts it in the form of a cloud where uh, the word that was used the most is shown uh, in big fonts. Okay, so we'll head over to report classification. So these are the types of reports you have in Zoho survey. So first we'll take a look at custom reports. Uh, custom reports, they uh, basically allow you to select and analyze uh, questions that you want to look at. So let's say the EOS wants to take a look at the dining as aspect of the restaurant. So they can create a custom report and they'll select the questions that they need. And now when they export this data to the spreadsheet, it'll be much cleaner. It'll, it'll only have those rows and columns that they need. So that's how custom reports help you. Uh, next comes cross-tab reports. So this helps you understand if there is a correlation between two questions. So let's say, for example, the EOS wants to uh, see if there is a correlation between the suite uh, chosen by the customer and the amenities they use. So they can use, uh, they can make a cross-tab report. They select the questions they want to compare and uh, the report is generated. So you can see that most people who took a swimming pool are uh, people who took the sea view apartment and uh, bar and lounge was mostly used by people in the executive suite. So again, understanding uh, relation between two questions. Uh, okay, so let's say I want to take a look at the same cross-tab report, but for a specific group. So let's say I want to take a look at uh, people that uh, came from the Instagram collector. So if you remember, the, the survey had multiple collectors that, is, that uh, were used to send uh, the survey URLs through different uh, different channels, like we had an Instagram collector and uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. And uh, and I want to take a look at respondents who visited for leisure. For, so there was a question which asked the respondent if they visited for business or if they visited for leisure. So I want to take a look at people uh, who came for leisure. So I'll create a filter here. All I have to do is select the collector, Instagram, and uh, the answer to the question, what was your purpose of stay, will be leisure. And uh, it's done. So I get the same cross-tab report, but with my own custom filters. So that's the purpose of uh, adding custom filters. OK. So as promised, some best practices, some, some tips. Uh, the first tip is always analyze quantitative data first. So I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say uh, a, a particular concierge, say Dave. Uh, I'm sorry if there are any Daves here. It's nothing personal. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll use my name. So, uh, so concierge Hari has been consistently been getting low ratings. So I know that uh, something's not right there. Uh, now, when I take a look at qualitative data, I will first go take a look at what people have been saying about concierge Hari. So this will help me uh, understand where to concentrate. So that's the first step. And the second one is understanding causation versus correlation. So just because there is a correlation 
doesn't always mean that one is causing the other. So let's understand this using the example. We'll go back to our uh, previous example of uh, cross-tabbing. So here we saw that uh, the people who took swimming pool, who use swimming pool, are mostly people who stayed at the sea view apartment. Hmm. So there is a correlation there. However, uh, is one causing the other? Not necessarily. So maybe the people who chose the sea view apartment were people who visited the EOS in the summer. And because it was summer, they were more likely to use the swimming pool. So summer is the factor here. So just because there is a correlation, don't jump into conclusions, like I do sometimes. OK. Uh, OK, so we'll go over to the product and see how things are done there. So I'll just share my screen. I hope you all can uh, see my screen. OK. So this is the report section of Zoho survey. Uh, you'll, or you'll find the summary of responses here. You can also take a look at the responses individually. In the summary of responses, you will find everything here. All the data is represented here. Uh, and depending on the type of data, it's, uh, it's shown as a pie chart or a bar graph or uh, stacked bar graphs, as we discussed, and clustered bar graphs and spider charts. Everything you will find it here. And on the left, you'll find uh, the custom reports I was talking about. This is to this is when you want to uh, analyze certain questions only. And uh, cross-tab reports, when you want to see if there is a correlation between two questions. Trend reports uh, help you understand if there is, uh, if, if, if it helps you understand the traffic to your survey on a monthly, daily, or yearly basis. And you can always download or export this data. And you can share this with your collaborators over here. You'll find that option here on the right. So that's how it looks inside Zoho survey. So all right, everyone. So I think we have no more questions. And uh, we'll wind up. So I, I hope you liked the session. Thank you so much for being here. I hope uh, you got some value from it. And uh, until next time, bye-bye.